There's been a huge breakthrough in quantum computing as 1.58 dimensions is apparently the correct amount of dimensions to unlock zero loss energy efficiency. And I know this sounds like a gigantic mouthful of scientific buzzwords. I'm gonna to try to break it down in a meaningful way today. But one of the first things that I noticed is that this new type of material, which we'll talk about, looks a lot like a Triforce. I just had to point that out. I don't know what sort of magic result is involved, but this is basically magical. And what you're looking at here in yellow and brown is bismuth on top of indium. And what's interesting about this is these are known as topological insulators, which have a different material outside and inside with the inside being insulating and the outside having a various number of complicated quantum states that allow them to conduct electricity. In this case, scientists in China have managed to make one function in fractional dimensions. It's not something we think about often. We think about dimensions as one, two, three, something like that. Uh, fractional dimensions are a real thing and the math behind them just fundamentally breaks my brain. So I'm not gonna get into that too much, but fractional dimension 1.58 is apparently the correct amount to create near lossless energy transfer because it's one singular uh, piece of matter with the indium and the bismuth just touching each other. It's pretty much completely lossless transfer. Now we knew about these things having in one, two, and three cube dimensions. Uh, th these were just discovered in the 1980s. They were noted for their fractal nature, which is sort of this recurring pattern down toward infinity. And ah, here is a very good explanation. They got a Nobel Prize for discovering this. On the inside, topological insulators are insulating, while at their boundaries, there are currents running. This makes them very suitable for applications in quantum technologies and could reduce world energy consumption enormously. So the only downside is they have to be very, very cold to exist. So it's very difficult. However, scientists recently managed to put bismuth on top of indium, and apparently that works for creating one of these things. I'm gonna see how we try to describe it. Ah, by growing a chemical element, bismuth, on top of semiconductor indium antimonide, the scientists in China obtained fractal structures that were spontaneously formed upon varying the growth conditions. The scientists then theoretically showed that from these conditions, a zero-dimensional corner modes and lossless one-dimensional edge states have emerged, which is very complicated. As they describe, by looking between the two dimensions, we have found the best of both worlds because the fractals behave like two-dimensional topological insulators at finite energies, and at the same time exhibit zero energy, a state that at its corners could be used as a qubit. My God, it took us a long time to get there, which are the building blocks of quantum computers. So they're hoping that they're making future qubits for quantum computers that would be nearly, it'd be like 99.9999999 on off toward infinity uh, level of efficiency, which would be fantastic. And uh, boy, this one's so complicated, it's hard for me to explain. I think it's gonna be a very long time before this hits like uh, mainstream manufacturing. Apple's new AI powered spam filter called Apple Intelligence is falling for phishing emails. Not only is it allowing them through the filter, but it's actually marking them as a priority email. It's prioritizing the scam emails instead of deleting them. And as funny as this is, it is something that could actually cost iPhone users if they get their password or credit card or personal identity fished. In case you haven't heard, Apple Intelligence is an AI powered filter for your iPhone. In theory, it's supposed to be able to see some information about your incoming emails and intelligently determine if they are spam or if they are real. Well, unfortunately, it's actually marking <laughs> the, it's marking the spam accounts as real and marking them as priority in some cases. Apple intelligence cannot tell the difference between real emails and phishing emails. Now, Apple has come out and said that this is a new product, it's in beta, we haven't worked out all the kinks, some bugs are to be expected, but this seems like a colossal, massive oversight that the AI product is not doing the very thing, the only thing that it's advertised as being capable of doing, literally the headline feature for integrating this on phones, and it's doing an opposite job, making the situation worse. So uh, this isn't to bag on Apple, this isn't to bag on AI in general. I hope they fix this. As new technology rolls out, there'll be lots of goofy little situations like this, but hopefully uh, less of this in the future. 
Good news for teachers everywhere today as OpenAI confirms having a text watermarking tool that could expose cheating. And where OpenAI goes, every other AI will follow. And this is a major issue because students, both in high school and college, are likely writing millions of papers with the help of AI. It's just the easiest, fastest way to do it, just like my generation's copying from the back of the cliff notes or from your older brother or sister that already took the class, up to the point where they're suggesting more than half of students use AI, at least in some limited capacity, to write papers. And it's not even limited to just high school, but also scientific journals are publishing papers with AI written parts, at least introductions is what we've seen so far, but it could be more than that. So having a text-based watermarking tool is actually extremely important to tell what is and isn't human labor. So they said that they have a tool ready that will help expose cheating students, and they're sitting on a text watermarking tool that has a high degree of accuracy and can detect essays or text written using ChatGPT, not using any AI software, unfortunately. And what they wrote in their little blog is that the text watermarking tool has been highly accurate and even effective against localized tampering, such as paraphrasing. It is less robust against globalized tampering, like using a translation system, rewording with another generative model, or asking the model to insert a special character in between every word and then deleting that character, thus making it trivial to circumvent by bad actors. So <laughs> this apparently only works for the easiest of cheating. It might get some of these high school papers, but anybody with a whole PhD might take the time to re-paraphrase whatever the AI wrote, in which case it would probably make it through to publication. We're living in the future because when your knee cartilage wears out, a new biomaterial might help replace it. And I want to emphasize this word replace because the new biomaterial actually helps you regrow the cartilage in your knee, which is extremely impressive. This was invented. Here's an actual picture of the substance itself, which we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, this was invented at Northwestern University by a team of scientists, and it has been shown to be capable of regenerating high-quality cartilage in knee joints, as demonstrated in a large animal model. So it hasn't been used in people yet. Uh, this is a little summary of what cartilage is. I think most of us know why cartilage is important. Here's where it gets spicy. The new biomaterial consists of two key elements, a bioactive peptide that binds to transforming growth factor beta-1, and a, which is a crucial protein for uh, cartilage growth and maintenance, and a modified hyaluric acid, which is a natural polysaccharide found both uh, in cartilage and in the lubricating synovial fluid of joints. So this is essentially a little, how would I say, a growth stimulant along with an injection of this natural lubricant that we need that your body is supposed to be producing. And the real breakthrough here is combining the two things together into a single cohesive pa uh, package. And we've got this very interesting uh, study here. We've got the left is untreated and right is treated with the new material. So they inject a thick paste-like material into the physical defects. And I believe in this one on the right, you can see that it was actually a little torn and split right there. And it forms a rubbery matrix promoting, uh, promoting the growth of high quality cartilage as the scaffold gradually degenerated. And the new growth consistently showed better than the control. You can actually see that here. I'm gonna go ahead and open up this image so we can zoom in a little bit more. On this one, you can see this little area in the middle that has a different texture. That's an area that has regrown and your body has taken over as it kind of works through this stuff as if it were miracle grow for a garden. And in the meantime, the stuff itself seems to bind and help hold the joints together. So this new biomaterial is doing a fantastic job at what it's supposed to do. They say this might help ACL tears, ankle sprains, maybe even like uh, disc type joint problems in your spine. We're not exactly sure, but it works super well in knees right now. So in the next 10 years, this might be a standard part of any sort of knee surgery. Maybe, you know, you get run over by an ice cream truck and you still need a knee replacement surgery because things are bad. Well, you can get this and do the surgery and have like a 10x better chance of making a full recovery.